Good evening, race fans. It's that time again for Burt Wojcik, Justin Snyder, and Earl Hoon Jr. to bring you all the latest news in the spring car world right here on BA Spring Car Live. Welcome back, everybody, to another great episode of PA Sprint Car Live right here on Bear Hill Gang TV. Of course, you know me. I'm Earl Hoon Jr., my partner in crime, Mr. Burt Wojcik, and we're back for another great Thursday night to debut your weekend and try to kick it off. Uh, Burt, we have a great show on hand tonight. We have Kevin Thomas Jr. He's going to be up in a little bit uh, shooting for a championship with the USAC Tour this year. And I tell you what, I think he's got a good chance to do it uh, this year. Last year, you know, had a team that was kind of built from scratch, really, you know, um, a bunch of just a bunch of guys just kind of put a 410 together on the USAC style, and uh, boy, they've turned out strong for them. A great season last year 18 410 or wingless 410 wins, plus a, a wing 360 win, which uh, uh <laughs> I'll uh, keep that in my mouth quiet on that one there. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, KTJ, great year last year, and uh, shooting for a, uh, a big year this year in the Hoffman uh, race in uh, Mean Green 69 this year. But we also have a legend here, Chris Aish. On hey, tonight, well, you got it right. I know I was practicing for a while, <laughs> boys. Yeah, uh, Chris Aish, he's gonna uh, be here a little bit later. Can't wait to talk to him. So we can catch up with him and uh, see what he's doing in his spare time. But as tradition, here at the top of the show, I can't say top of the hour because we had a power outage here. Thank you, uh, PP, enough for coming out quickly, taking the trees off the power lines and stuff. Uh, thank you guys, did great work. Uh, but anything wrap up last weekend. The weekend wrap-up presented by X1 Race Cars as everybody went to the Williams Grove Speedway for night number one, literally night number one, mm -hmm. for the Articat All-Star Circuit of Champions presented by Mobile One for the Tommy Henner Shits Classic. And ladies and gentlemen, was it a classic? Lance Dewey started 13th, and he comes home with a checkered flag. On Friday 13th, nonetheless. Let's not forget about that. I want to give a shout-out right now to the Williams Grove Speedway. At a boy, you guys went out with the water truck after qualifying and after uh, the concies. Went out with the water truck and actually put some water on the track. Great job, you guys, because that provides some of the best racing we've seen so far this year in Central PA Arrow. No doubt about it. Uh, you kind of had to do that, to be honest with you, because Mother Nature was just being a bear all yes. day with the sun and a 30 mile an hour constant wind just blowing in your face. And that'll really dry out a racetrack. Oh, for sure. I mean, we've seen that multiple times this year, you know. There's not much you can do when you get those kind of conditions, but Williams Grove put a lot of effort in this to try and get a, as best of a service as they could on Friday night, and they did. As you see here, Lance Louise, my God, I mean, that 69K, once again, was just a rocket ship working his way from 13th there, and, um, man, I tell you what, it's just, I think we're in for another summer of the week, Earl, the way it started out this uh, this past weekend. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. So Lance Deweese did uh, get the win over Brock Zierfoss, Danny Dietrich, Chad Trout, and Chad Kemino was the first all-star riding out the top five. And real quick, let's uh, look on this. Chad Trout, we had him on our first uh, show in the beginning of the year down at Racing Extravaganza. And he goes, you know, I'm not going to be going to Williams Grove a lot, just, you know, big shows. And, and he's been there since the opener. Yeah, and look at that. He's getting top five finishes. He's getting top fives. Chad Trout has just had a great year. I really think that – the win at the icebreak has really revitalized this whole uh, this 1X team. You know, last year, you know, they lost their owner, and they weren't sure what their plans were. And now look at them this year. Pretty much competitive almost every single week out, especially at Williams Coast Speedway. And um, and everyone here, you got to give an ad boy to here, is uh, Brock Zierfoss. He did everything he yeah. could to hold off Lance, and it just wasn't enough. He slipped up just a hair, and it was just enough for Lance to get under him going into turn one then. And uh, Carson Macedo, he was also credited with the hard charger. Oh, what a run that boy had. My Absolutely. God, he was flying out there. What was it, I think, 27th to 7th? So, no, 12th. Yeah, he broke in. Uh, I think he barely broke into the top ten somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, got to look at that. But great, uh, great, uh, great show at Williams Grove. Oh, fantastic! And then Lincoln Speedway. Uh, they also had a normal show there, and that was a great one. Little Freddie Raymer, he got the W. Yeah, I tell you what, as we bring up the highlights here, Brian Monteith starts second, and here's a rarity for you: did not lead a lap. Yeah, how's that happen at Lincoln? I don't tell know. Tell me, Brian Monteith does not lead a single lap at Lincoln. But boy, I tell you what. Little Freddie was looking phenomenal on um, Saturday night. Good for them, though. After the struggles they've been having to start the year, you know, flipping on opening day and then a couple, you know, bad breaks at Lincoln and at the Grove, 
great job by Little Frey and Fred and everyone on that team to get this car together and go out there and get a win on a Saturday night. No doubt about it. Little Freddie gets the win over Brian Monteith, Alan Crimes, Corey Haas, and Tyler Ross. Good job, Tyler, rounding out the top five. And then Port Royal Speedway, the Speed Palace, hosted night number two of the All-Stars against the Pennsylvania Posse, and he did it again. He's two for two on the weekend. Lance DeWeese puts it on the shithouse. Well, let me tell you something. That red flag won that race for him, without a doubt. That red flag won that race for him. He was not the best car that night. Aaron Reitzel and Anthony Macri, I believe, had way better cars than what Lance had. And even Lance said it in our post, in our, uh, in our interview there. But, uh, man, I tell you what, this car, it don't matter. On these big half miles, it's, it's money. It's absolute money. But hats off to both Anthony Macri and Aaron Reitzel for giving it what they could to try and beat the 69K, and they couldn't do it. Uh, well, they gave it a hell of a, a, you know, a hell of a fight, and they put on a hell of a show. Oh, my God. Aaron, I, yeah. Aaron Anthony Macri, I got to get this, all the credit in the world to this kid. He did what he could to hold off right. So he was out for a while there. He was, he was right there. He's showing this early in the season. He has a lot of speed. And, man, I tell you what, this kid, um, as we said, I think we were talking about this almost week in and week out so far this year. He's uh he's gonna go places, Earl. No doubt about it. Aaron Wright will finish second over Anthony Macri. Stevie Buckwater, good job, Stevie, and Greg Hotnet rounded out the top five. And ladies and gentlemen, it was a great show. Now, after April fourteenth, we are gonna look into the hoseheads dot com Central PA points update that is presented by Champion Racing Oils. And ladies and gentlemen, after April fourteenth, Greg Hotnet has a 21-point lead over Brian Monteith, which Monteith, by the way, has two wins. Danny Dietrich is in third. He also has two wins, and Lucas Wolf is in fourth with one win. So Greg Hodnett has yet to take home a checker flag, but he's leading the HostEds.com point standing. Well, he's been in the top ten every race this year. Well, That's why. I mean, he's he's okay. been consistent. That's the main thing. Consistency wins your championships. And that's what uh that's what Greg's been doing so far this year. I mean, what is it? I believe he hasn't I think he's been only out of top five three times so far this yep. year. Yeah. I mean, that's what's winning him, you know. Now get a load of this. All right. So so we look through the point standings and Lance Deweese is fifth, mm -hmm. but he leads all drivers with wins. Hey, if this team will go back out running full time, could they be contending for championships at your local racetrack? Yeah. Yeah. Without doubt. I mean, we said that, how many times have we said this? I mean, Lance would have been the All Star champ, or not the All Star, the Speedway champion if he thought two years, if he would have ran out, ran full time. Um, hell, he's leading the All Star points right now. Yeah. He's yeah, he's at the perfect score, three hundred points so far right now in the All Star tour, and I think uh, I think Macri's second right now in the All Star points. No doubt about it. So, it's crazy. It is so, but I mean, I, I don't think they're going to go out and run the All Stars, but if they were to go out run full time at say Port Royal or Williams Grove. We might talk about an undefeated season. Hey, you never know. He has a pretty good win percentage right now. But that's going to wrap up the weekend recap presented by X1 Race Cars, and we will move on to the next segment in this week's Dirt presented by Williams Grove Speedway. And uh, just a couple of notes that uh, we got here for the average car count here in PA season. After 14 events, now is up to 28. So slowly but surely, our weekly car count is going up. 46 and 47 helped that out a lot. I mean, 24 at Lincoln. But quality over quantity, again, like we said, we kind of figured, you know, um, a smaller car count down at Lincoln. But you still got a full field down there, 410 sprint cars down there. But still, when you get car counts like 46 and 47, that's really going to help boost those numbers up. No doubt about it. Uh, also, some uh, news here that broke here a little bit uh, earlier in the week. Brian Sabito, race fans, he's going to be uh, driving the Book 13 car this week for the Articat All-Star Circuit of Champions presented by Mobile One out in Ohio. So... Paul McMahon, for some reason, isn't driving the Book 13, and Brian Sabito's in. Unless he's running the Outlaws this weekend in the, or out in the Midwest there. That's Maybe. That's the only thing I could think of. He'll be in that, was he, in the 45, I think it is? Yeah. That's the only thing I could think of. Unless Book's bringing out a second car for this weekend. Hey, you never know. Uh, that'd be great if he would bring out oh, a second car. For sure. Uh, also, a big congrats goes out to Steve Owings. He won at Trailways last, uh, last Friday, along with Steve Wilbur. Hey, he won the 358s. At the Lincoln Speedway. And no panic, Davey Frannick. He takes home the opener in the 360s at the Sealands Grove Raceway. And we're going to stick with that, the Sealands Grove Raceway. Mm -hmm. We heard some great rave reviews about that track, about the racing, about how everybody can see uh, all <laughs> around. A, that's that a track. great thing. No doubt about it. Uh, 
One of the best improvements that they made in years was move the pits outside of turn four, and people that were there saw a hell of a race, and they get to watch the whole thing. Yeah, now if they can just get the uh, get the tower out of the way there, now you get a full view of the field. But I tell you what, great job by Seals Grove listening to the fans, what they wanted. And, uh, man, I tell you what, so, much, so, so many great improvements just going around in the area here. Really. You know, what all they're doing at Port Royal and down at, uh, up at the Seals Grove Speedway. But, um, yeah, good job by Seals Grove. No doubt about it. Uh, and coming up next week, one of the biggest sprint car races in the world at the Mansfield. It is Raceway. a big sprint. Well, it's going to be. It, it's going to be. It's right up there mm -hmm. now, officially. I mean, hopefully, this is not the only year that they do that. Hopefully, it's a great success from this year and here on out, right, right up there with the Williams Grove National mm -hmm. Open, the Kings Royal at Eldora Speedway, and also the Knoxville Nationals. You know, that gets bigger and better. They're, uh, they're, I keep seeing on social media about more cars are going to participate. Mm -hmm. They're uh, registering. And, you know, the Spring Car World Championship out at Mansfield is up to 81 410 Spring Car teams signed up so far. I can see 100. I Absolutely. Could, I, th I think 100. The question is, could we see 100 at this big event? I think so. I mean, but now then again, how will this work out with them running two nights now? And I'm, I'm, I didn't really read up on the format here. Are they – is it going to be two separate shows? Or is Friday night going to lock in Friday night qualifying for Saturday? And they're running like a Knoxville style alphabet soup on Saturday. Uh, I don't really know what's going on there. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how this format's going to work out there. No, about it. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. But you know what? We had Lance on the pre race show up at Port Royal this past weekend. And uh, he, one thing that he is thankful for that they added a practice night. Yeah. So some guys that never been there uh, get to practice. And believe it or not, Depending on how the weather is out in Ohio mm -hmm. this week, hopefully they can get everything in. But it looks like the cold is going to come charging in once again on those guys. They might not run. So next week at Mansfield could be the season opener for some of those guys. And that's going to be your season opener going for a hundred grand to win. That's crazy. That's a great way to start season. Hell, they might move back to March or February then when they could. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and there's a lot of people saying that Lance could probably – Take home that hundred grand. There's a lot of people saying that now. I don't know will it happen it's, or not. It's uh, who's who. It is. It's, it's, let's not, gonna... not forget this too. Brock Zierfoss came very close last year, to almost locking in that show. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. So hopefully, all of our guys that are signed up go out there. They do very well, and we will uh, have a show uh, next week uh, talking about Mansfield. So good luck, and also you can go. Uh, it's SpeedShiftTV.com. They're going to do the full package out at Mansfield. So if you can't make it, you can watch on SpeedShiftTV.com. Hey, uh, special thanks to SpeedShift2 for helping us out this weekend and all the great highlights they did and all the great broadcasts they did this weekend as well. No doubt about it. Thank you, Chet, and the entire gang. We're going to be working with you guys a little more this year. And like to thank all the fans for coming out and having fun at the pre-race show. That, that was fun. That was a lot of fun, and we had a great turnout. But, folks, you are located in the fully injected motorsports fan zone. When we have Kevin Thomas Jr. come up here in a little bit, if you have any questions for Kev, make sure you put them in the uh, comment section below. That is the fully injected motorsports fan zone, and we'll make sure we're going to get them on the air. But we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have KTJ. Stay tuned. Good evening, race fans. Derek Snyder here from Pace Performance. Pace Performance is your complete source for all of your automotive needs. The nation's leading retailer of Chevy Performance Parts is also home to thousands of aftermarket performance parts, regardless of your vehicle's manufacturer. Visit PacePerformance.com to shop 24-7 and see the largest selection at one convenient location. And thank you for tuning in to Beer Hill Gang TV. Sweeney Cars is proud to support Beer Hill Gang TV in 2018. Stay tuned to find out who is Sweeney Cars Driver of the Week. Powered by Pace Performance, Sweeney Cars, located in Youngstown, Ohio, has been the leading dealer for new Chevy, Buick, and GMCs for over 95 years. Sweeney Cars has an unbeatable selection of over 900 new and certified used cars. Top-rated customer service makes Sweeney your go-to for your next car or truck purchase. Sweeney is also a Pace Performance dealer for high-performance parts. To browse the latest selection or schedule an appointment, log on to SweeneyCars.com.
Welcome back, race fans, and uh, we're still having some technical difficulties. As you can see, the power went out here earlier and kind of jacked all of our stuff up, and now we're trying to get a hold of Kevin Thomas Jr. But, however, we're going to go into the pace performance, driver of the week, Bert. Well, I don't think there was any choice about this, Lance Solis. My God, two wins on a weekend in dominating form or fashions. Lance Solis easily driver of the week. But I tell you what, little Freddie – he could. He deserved a nod though this weekend with kind of turning the season around. This is a huge deal for that 51 team. You know, as we said earlier, when the Lincoln highlights there, is um they needed that. They needed that win so badly after the way they started their season, Earl. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, I mean, just hats off to the entire 69K crew, Donnie, Lance, and Davey Brown. They're just picking up right where they left off. But yeah. go ahead. Without, without a doubt, I mean, and I could see it happening again where. Lance Weiss's win the Tuscarora 50 coming up in uh coming up in uh May I or in uh September. I could see Lance Weiss win the dream race, you know, if he could. I mean, who knows what's going to happen the rest of the year here. The sky's the limit, but don't forget that uh we have a lot of other competitors that are knocking on the door and they want their first wins of the year as well. Oh my god, and I think Anthony Macri could possibly get um could possibly get up there too. I mean, I think he's only a week or two away from getting a win. Nope. I really do. Nope. I'm, nope. Ah, I can see him getting something here. So uh, as we try and get Kevin Thomas Jr. on the phone here. Um, yes, I think we finally got him hey, here. So Kevin perfect. X, go, Kevin, I don't know. He maybe took a nap and we woke him up. But he finally. Uh, well, we did at the Monteith a couple weeks ago. Yeah, no doubt about it. So <laughs> we're, we're just, impeccable timing right here on uh, the show, <laughs> as always. Uh, but we're going to wait till Phil Pat. Patches him in here. He's probably sipping on some sweet tea. Ooh. You know, you know how Kevin likes his sweet tea. Yes, yes. I hope we turned him on the gear seat last year. Yeah, no doubt I about hope we it. Did. No, I mean gear seat's the best. How it can you not like it? But joining us right now on the Moose's Ooh. LZ Hotline is Mr. Kevin Thomas Jr. Kevin, thank you for taking some time and coming on the show, bud. Hey, no, no problem. Sorry, I missed y'all's call the first two times. Yeah, <laughs> no, no worries, man. Hey, uh, you kicked your weekend off here. In the midgets uh, out at the Kokomo Raceway, and uh, nice turnout, bud. Not a bad run to get the season off with you second the midgets. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too terrible, you know. You know, we got a good qualifying run. You know, started on the pole, and I made a stupid mistake. You know, jumped the cushion, got us behind the eight ball. You know, basically on lap one, so uh, a little driver error, um, but you know, it was a good weekend. Did it feel good to get back in the car? Because I imagine it's been a while since you guys have been running with all the rain you guys have been having, plus you guys haven't really ran since Florida. So did it feel good to get back racing this weekend? You know, honestly, you know, so we raced a sprint car, too, for uh, uh, Dylan Hayward. You know, we ran the 63. and um, Sprint cars were the first ones to hot lap. And, you know, I sat in the car, and I, I was like, you know, I'm actually nervous. I'm not real sure if I know what to do anymore. <laughs> And then uh, we went out there for our first hot lap session, and, and it was pretty good. So, But, yeah, I wouldn't – I'm not going to lie. I was a little rusty there for a second. No doubt about it. Now, I mean, as a driver, the weather is totally off its rocker here this spring. Huh. I mean, it's just crazy. What do you do in your spare time? I mean, I know during the week you got to get yourself all hyped up, but then come the weekend, you know, it, it starts to snow, and wherever you're going to race it, cancels what what do you do to try to pass time and prepare yourself for the next race um well you know obviously we get cars ready or whatever but you know we got rained out for like three consecutive weeks there so every week we hope the race is going to run and you know we change our gear and for the next racetrack and then we get rained out and change the gear again the next week so there wasn't a whole lot of uh you know preparation there because we had quite a bit of time off so we're pretty prepared, but, you know, just there's not a whole lot to do. You know, I go race go-karts. You know, I got a basketball goal in the shop. Do a lot of stuff around here in the shop, you know, just organizing. We got a new shop here in Brownsburg, so we were actually moving shops and uh, just getting things in place where we where we like them. And, uh, just doing little bitty small things and, you know, whether it's building an extra front end here and there or bleeding some brakes, you know, on those extra front ends, just little small things to maybe – help you out a little bit farther down the road to try to pass the time. Now, last year you came in here with kind of a, I almost want to say a, a ragtag bunch, you know, you came with the car that you just finished a couple weeks ago, 
and then you win the Williams Grove here. And now this year, you are with one of the most prestigious teams there are on the USAC Angel National Sprint Car Tour, and that is the Hoffman Racing Car. What has the transition been like going from, you know, a team where, you know, you build a car in 24 hours to now you have a good team behind you here? Oh, it's great. You know, they got a lot of confidence in me, and, you know, that helps out all my confidence, you know, whenever I get on the racetrack. So it's it's really nice. You know, they're great to work with. You know, obviously we have the – we had the same personnel as we did last year. Davy Jones was my crew chief. Brad Alexander, uh, he comes to the shop every week. Um, Dalton Jones, he comes to the shop every week. So it's we got our guys all back, and it's nice to have like the, I guess the advice from like a championship winning team to maybe give you a, a few different little pointers, what whatever it is, you know, to maybe help you out through the season. So it's uh, that's real nice on that end. And then you know, obviously the backing from Mean Green and all the support that. Uh, Hoffman gets, you know, so that's that's really nice. You know, Hoosier helps out quite a bit. And, uh, you know, Walker Filter, Jonathan Birds um, is on board this year, and you know, we got a lot of cool people that came on board with uh, the '69, and uh, it's just been a it's been a pretty cool process. I enjoyed it. I mean, how did this whole ride come about, Kev? I mean, this is a, a pretty historic ride. How did this whole thing come around? They just give you a call, be like, "Hey, we have an opening. Why don't you come drive for us?" Uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it was. I was actually sitting in McAllister's drinking sweet tea whenever I got Oh, the call. there's a shocker. He's drinking you know. all of it. Yeah, he's there drinking sweet go. tea. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in there. But, uh, you know, I just I just had a phone call with them, and, you know, it just kind of transpired from there. We obviously raced together since the beginning of my career. You know, I've always had a pretty good relationship with them. And then, um, you know, just kind of hit it off from there. Last year we had a good year, and, you know, they had an opening, and, you know, they just kind of come on board. So it's uh, it's been really nice, and it's been a good transition. And, you know, starting off the year well, we got the points for you. I know it's really early, but it's at least nice to not start out behind. So, um, you know, we're going into finally the USAC season starting out uh, in Midwest, um, starting in Montpelier this weekend. The weather actually looks pretty good. So I think we'll get a race in and finally start the outdoor season up here. No doubt about it, folks. If you're just uh, joining us here on the show, on the Moose's LZ Hotline, we have USAC regular Kevin Thomas Jr. If you have any questions for Kev, make sure you put them in the fully injected motorsports fan zone. That is the comment section below. Now, um, Kevin, a lot of people are saying right now that with you going the 69 car, which I include myself, that you pretty much kind of have the favorite or the favorite to win this championship and maybe knock off Chris Windham. How confident are you guys in this ride that you can go out there and maybe get Windham for the USAC championship this year? Uh, yeah, we're, we're real confident. I think, you know, uh, off the season that we had last year, I mean, that was great confidence booster in itself. I mean, you know, it's hard to win 20 races no matter what you're doing. And for us to pull that off, you know, that was a real, you know, confidence booster there. So, uh, you know, with all the backing and the experience from the Hoffmans and the experience from my crew chiefs and, you know, all of us kind of working together all of last year and then we're all working together this year with the same crew, same cars, same engines, you know. Uh, I mean, I enjoy, like, you know, you know hearing that we're a favorite. and uh, But, I mean, at the end of the day, we still got to go out and do our job because there's been favorites to win the Super Bowl and they don't even make the playoffs. So, <laughs> that's just – that's just the way it is, and it's no different in our sport. You know, you could be a favorite, but if you don't go out there and, and do your job and win races and finish up front and, you know, limit bad nights, you know, anything can happen. I mean, it's, we got some pretty stiff competition, you know. I mean, second points is last year's uh, national points champion, so it's, it's not going to be easy by any means. But at the end of the day, you know, they're – human just like we are so they can make mistakes but they also can limit their mistakes just like we work hard to do so it's it's uh it'll be a challenge but i think it'll be a fun year a lot of competition uh we'll just see where we land now i think he said about somebody winning the super bowl i believe some underdogs won the super bowl ain't that right earl oh yeah sure yeah. did yeah i think yeah. i think you know kevin's trying to if he wants to pull some of that mentality uh 
from us here. We yeah. can paint that mean green car uh, a midnight green. Uh, uh, you know what? I'll also no. uh, I'll also <laughs> crack uh, Kevin's balls here because you know he's from Alabama. So I'm going to assume he's an Alabama fan. Roll Tide. Uh, which is unfortunate, oh, Kev, uh, because I'm going to convert you over essentially to become a Penn State Nittany Lion fan, sir. <laughs> I want to see how you do that. So we're going to so we're going to do that, and because they're going to win the national championship. So what do you think of those apples? Oh, I would rather not win the championship. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way I could not do that to my team. No way. <laughs> yes, you no can. Way. There's always a way. Never say there's not a way because there's always a way. No. You know, <laughs> And no by the way. by the way, you are co-champions with the uh, uh, UCF uh, Florida Knights. By the way, bud, co-champs. Oh. <laughs> I'm on that bandwagon. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Kev, I'm, I'm okay with that. They didn't lose, so that's fine. Yeah, Very true. No doubt about it. Hey, Kev, you know uh, USAC has gone with some rule changes this year, especially in cock and the in cockpit changes. What do you think about the rule changes that, you know, Levi and the entire crew made that you're not allowed to make pretty much any cockpit uh, changes inside? They took that away. So how do you go into that? How do you set up a car for maybe during the race? Um, well, you know, I have mixed emotions about the no cockpit adjustments. Um, you know, what, what my thought process is on it, you know, it's like, you know, you got a lot of people being aggressive there with their race cars, say, at the start of Feasters. And I'm not saying it's dangerous. I mean, the whole damn sport's dangerous. So it's like, you know, sometimes you get people that get a little aggressive. You know, cars aren't necessarily handling like you want them to at the start of the race. You know, maybe even at the end of the race. But, um, you know, fortunate part is we're all in the same boat. So, I mean, we all got to make our decisions. But, you know, I was on my end, you know, I made a lot of shock adjustments inside the race car. So, not saying that it, not saying that it hindered me, but you know we all got to make the same decisions together. But uh, you know I work. The guy that works on my car is also a shock guy, so you know he teaches me a lot about that and what the shocks do. So I had a pretty good understanding on what turns did what and how to make the race car better. So taking those away from me, you know, I don't know if it hurts me, but I haven't won a race yet, so maybe it is hurting me. So. <laughs> um, it's just it's just a little different, you know. I I don't necessarily agree with it. I mean, some people say it's all for. I don't really know the whole reason behind it. Some people say it's for cost. I'm like, we have hundred fifty dollar shock adjusters, but twelve hundred dollar bleeders. So yeah. it's like I don't I don't get it. Yeah, but right. Now is this gonna, the way it is. Is this going to affect your driving style at all? You know, with having to you know not having the adjuster now, you're going to have to kind of. Maybe take it a little bit easy now at the start of the race, or you know, can you throw a setup in there that you know maybe hey, you know, just kind of keep the same driving style and have the same effect? I don't think it'll affect driving style. I mean, it. I mean, it can. I mean, I I can definitely see where you know maybe you get a little aggressive with the setup at the start of the race. You know, you're pretty tight. Maybe they water the track right before you go out. You know, the track will eventually go away, but you know maybe the first ten fifteen laps are pretty tight. So. Um, I could see it working both ways, but I could also see, you know, where you try to be a little conservative and then you suck at the end of the feature. So it's it's just – I think it's just going to be a hit and miss deal. But at the end of the day, the same competitors that are up front each week are going to still be up front. It, I don't think it's going to make a difference with racing. It's just going to make a difference in the pits on how, how aggressive you get. And, um, you know, not that I didn't touch the shocks. But, like, I don't touch them a lot. But when I needed them, it was nice to have them there. But, um, you know, for instance, like at the over matches, I adjusted a lot. And, uh, you know, it ended up working out one race. But there's also been races that say, like, Putnamville, Bloomington, or Kokomo, where I don't touch anything all night. So it's uh, it's just depending on track prep and just the type of racetrack you're at and, you know, how fast it goes away, whether you – just I think it's going to have to keep up with the track just a lot more than uh, what you would have because, I mean, now what you made adjustment-wise on the racetrack, now you have to do it in the pits and hope for the best. So it's just a little bit different aspect. Uh, well, uh, we'll dive into our fully injected motorsports fan zone here. And uh, James Welsh asks, um, are you looking forward to come back to PA? Uh, we kind of figured we are because, you know, we uh, we are your hookup for uh, a couple <laughs> things, including uh, beer and um, tea. But uh, you also did pick up a win last year uh, coming in here with the USAC Amso National Sprint Cars and the return to Williams Grove. So uh, how uh, how much are you looking forward to coming back here to PA? 
I love coming to PA. It's honestly my favorite part. I mean, I love the racing. I love the tracks. Grandview is awesome. You know, going to all these different tracks. My favorite part is going to that park inn. The park the inn. Park, getting drunk and stealing somebody's, <laughs> stealing somebody's four wheeler or something in the middle of the night out of a trailer. It's a, it's a blast. Just hanging out with everybody. We're all in the same spot. You know, they got that little bar out there and maybe have too many drinks and do something stupid. So it's it's a good time. I love it. Oh, are, are, you, are you saying you've done something stupid out there at the bar? <laughs> oh, last year I tried to drive the floor around to so their freaking pool. Out of boy! Hey, out of boy! To, I, I like where this I, is I, going. I was trying to ramp the floor into the pool, but unfortunately I had gates all the way around it. So <laughs> we weren't successful. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think somebody's not saying the park in this I'm year. I'm a lightweight, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm a lightweight, so it happens early. <laughs> no doubt about it. Hey, when you do come in uh, Central PA here later in the year, you know, obviously our normal winged 410 sprint cars are going to be with you guys. Uh, are you trying to hook up with maybe some teams here with the wing on and go for the double? Uh, I mean, I might. I, I, would, I would honestly like to. I mean, I would like to experience some of those tracks with the wing on it, uh, but – if we're running for points, you know, I probably ought to focus on it, but I don't know. We might we might try something. We'll see. See if we can get in somebody's win car out there. That'd be nice. Uh, for any of you car owners that are watching this show, we have your daily announcement that uh, another driver is looking for a winged ride for when USAC comes in here. So Kevin Thomas Jr., he's definitely a wheelman. So any car owners, hey, get this guy a winged 410 ride when USAC comes in here. We're going to go to the fully injected motorsports fan zone once again, Kevin. Uh, and Chris Chave. He puts it a question, are you excited to come to New York, New York season? You know, you guys, uh, USAC added Weedsport uh, onto the Eastern Swing here June 19th. So you excited to get up to uh, New York this year? Yeah, absolutely. I've actually, I've never seen the place, but I watched some videos and it looks pretty fun. Uh, you know, obviously this year, I think there's going to be a little bit more traveling involved just because it's not so centrally located, but maybe a little bit less time at the park end. But, um, you know, I think, it, I think, you know, traveling that much and getting to a different state, you know, that I've never raced in. I think it would be cool. Um, you know, we've obviously been in New Jersey, uh, like New Egypt Speedway, but I've uh, never been to New York, so I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, hopefully it treats us well. Now, that's a question I have for you because the night before, you guys will be at Bridgeport, and then you got to book <laughs> it up to western New York. I, what's your thoughts on that? Because that's going to be hell on you guys, especially trying to travel that far of a distance there. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be pretty tough. Um, you know, we don't really do that much, you know, traveling usually in between races. And, uh, you know, Sprint Week's probably the most we travel in like a sort of a span. But, I mean, you know, we're going to have some have some nights where it's going to be pretty tough. And that trip that you just said right there is going to be hard on us. So, uh, But we all got to do it. So, you know, we're just hopefully we have a good night before where we don't have to fix anything make our life a little bit easier on us and then uh you know just off in the truck and we got three guys and then my wife she can drive the truck and trailer hopefully and uh you know we, we can make it i think we should be all right no doubt about it we we have a lot of fans tuned in tonight's show kevin they're asking a lot of good questions uh for you to answer we're going to do one final question in the fully injected motorsports fans i uh fans on this is coming from brian list guy he wants to know you know do you put any pressure on yourself, or does anybody else put any pressure on yourself for running this historic uh, car, the 69 Mean Green Machine? That is a good question. Uh, yeah, there's obviously – I put more pressure on myself than probably anybody in the world, you know. Uh, you know, I don't expect anything less than a win, so it don't matter what I'm driving, whether it's a sprint car, midgets, or a crown car, or what name's on the side of it, so – I put enough pressure on myself, but you know, with these guys, you know, you better perform. I mean, if you don't perform, then it's it's just not acceptable. So it's um, there's pressure on both sides. I mean, I'll probably put more pressure on myself, but you know, I mean, Hoffman, they don't like to lose just like I don't. So uh, you know, I, I think we all got the same mindset. But at the end of the day, when you have that mindset, of, you know, second is not acceptable. Then there's obviously pressure, but. Uh, you know, I, I think with the team that we got, you know, we got a good shot of uh, easing that pressure a little bit. So um, I think it's just going to be a good year, and uh, hopefully we can, you know, run up another 20 wins or so. So that would be pretty good on our part, and, uh, but that's tough to do. So um, 
that doesn't happen every year unless you're dying shots. <laughs> no doubt about it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself, Kev, because uh, you're a hell of a wheel man, and you don't have much more hair on top of your head to lose. So don't put too oh, much pressure, no. all right? I'm going to end up just having sideburns by the end of this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, sir. Uh, uh, Kev, thank you for coming on the show, my man. Can't wait till you guys come in here and uh, – we can catch up and, and drink a couple of beers, and, and good luck this weekend, bud. And we will have gear C for you right. when you come in, too. We will have the best damn gear C uh, oh, yeah. you will yeah. ever have. All right, good deal. All right, <laughs> thanks, well, I Kev. I appreciate it, guys, and we'll see you guys later. No doubt about thanks, it. Bud. Thank you. Kevin Thomas Jr. just getting off of the Moose's LZ hotline. Always a good time That's when great. we have KTJ on the show. Oh, my God, what a man. I when we uh, had him on last year, uh, it was a great interview again, and he does it. Again this year, I love how you tried to convert it from a Penn, from an Alabama fan to a Penn State it. fan. I don't know how you're going to do it. No, I don't like I, don't, roll tide. Those gives Southern boys, I tell you what, those Southern boys, they are so dedicated to that college football stuff. It's it's amazing. Like it puts us to shame up here with Penn State fans. All they do for Alabama. I mean, not saying Penn State are bad fans, but man, that's a whole other world down there. I don't know how you're going to do it. Well, shut up. Shut this. Be quiet. Hush. Yeah, we're, I don't know where I'm you're I'm just going to shut up right just, now and just, say, hey, thanks for coming on, KTJ. Geez. And uh, I was uh, hopefully we can see him pick up a win at the Grove. No doubt about it. He got one last year, and I'm sure he'll be uh, going after checker flag again this year. So thank you, Kev, very much. And all you fans that are tuning in, let's give Kevin Thomas Jr. a big old thumbs up for coming on the show. Well, fans, we're going to take another quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to have Chris H. joining us on the show. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Tyler Altmaier, and I am the owner and founder of Fully Injected Motorsports and FullyInjected.com, a professional short track PR firm that has been in operation since 2010. Headquartered in western Pennsylvania, Fully Injected Motorsports focuses primarily on providing professional grade press to motorsports teams, racetracks, and organizations all throughout the country, keeping your fans and other racing enthusiasts up to date with breaking news, event schedules, and recent race results. Our original content and mass distribution service is sure to keep your sponsors as well as your team's biggest supporters in the loop and on track. For more information, contact us today at FullyInjected.com. Now, back to PA Sprint Car Live on Beer Hill Gang TV. Welcome back, folks, and we're still trying to get hold of uh, Chris A. So if anybody knows Chris, tell them to answer the phone. We're trying to call him, but uh, a little bit about this guy. This guy is truly a legend in this area he started off at a real young age he also went on the world he was a rookie with the world of outlaws back in 1987 Bert he was a real low buck guy and he decided to go on the uh, world of outlaw tour and long and behold he was a rookie how about that well that's when you really could do that back in the 80s you know that kind of leads into what uh, I saw this week with the whole that article about TNN did you see that the yeah, one yeah it that was a great leads, article that re leads right into it it's like back then you really could because you didn't have this big TV deal or anything like that, that these guys had to go really kind of, you know, had um, go get these big haulers and try and make it to TV to get their sponsorships up there. So really back then, the age you could, and nowadays I don't think you really could do it with a low buck team, but Chris really proved that he could do that um, back in the late 80s. No doubt about it. He was definitely a, a wheel man. Come on, Phil. You can, can you get it in there? Yeah, I know. Huh. I know. Come on, Phil. <laughs> you should be a pro at this. <laughs> Uh, we we do have uh, Chris Ace here on the line. If Phil can get in the hole. Yeah. Hey, hey, here we hey. go. Welcome, Chris Ace, to Bear Hill Gang TV. Thank you for taking some time and coming on the show. Uh, thanks for having me on. No doubt, dude. Hey, man, people want to know, you, you know, you retired a couple years back. Uh, what in the hell are you doing with life now, my friend? Uh, well, I just uh, play around at the shop here. We got some go-karts we play with. Um, that's about it, really. Do you uh, do you still find time to go to the races on weekends? You know, when you get a little bored, and and uh, do you just don't find time to go and enjoy yourself? Uh, yeah, I go. I, I I usually go just about every Saturday to Lincoln. It's not too far from my house, so right. we usually run over if we can't catch the whole program. At least go out and catch the features. 
No doubt about it for you fans that are tuning in. We have a legend here in the Central PA area. He was a driver of the E&G Classics, number 17E at one point. That was his own car. Chris Ace joins us. If you have any uh, comments or questions for uh, Chris, make sure you put them in a fully injected motorsports fan zone in the comments section below. Now, Chris, I mean, that kind of leads in nicely here because you do have 42 wins yourself at the Lincoln Speedway. How much has the track changed over the, pa over the couple of years now since you started racing to where it is now? Well, I'm not so sure. The track has changed. The cars have changed a lot. The tires seem to be better. Uh, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of young guys coming along, doing really well. Um, but it's mostly the car changes. You know, the the, the flat wing and uh, the tires seem to be getting so much better, and uh, the racing seems like it's really good. Yeah, no doubt about it. The racing uh, has been very good, and. I mean, don't cut yourself short, dude. You have a lot of feature wins. You know, you have 109 career uh, 410 wins, and, and that's a, a great uh, a feat of itself, dude. And do you ever get the itch to get try to get back in it, or are you officially, you know, done with the driving aspect of it? No, I'm pretty much done. Um, I'm at this point getting back in. I'm getting a little too old and just not haven't been around. You know, in the pits or in a car, and, uh, you know, that makes a big difference. So uh, I couldn't really see myself getting back into it and be, being successful. So uh, just go and watch. Have a good time. No doubt about it. Well, now, <laughs> I wouldn't sell yourself short here because back in 2011, now this is only, what, seven short years ago, you went to Trailways and you got your first four ten, or, or you got your first Trailway 358 win there and your first race ever there. So say if you were to get back in a car – do you feel like you could be so competitive in it if you were to uh, get into either 350 or 410? Well, first of all, I have to get on a serious uh, exercise regimen. Uh, <laughs> you just because these these cars are getting more physical to drive, even you know they're stuck so hard. Um, but I, I really just I think you know you, you, if if you're not in touch with it and around it all the time, I think it would be a pretty tall feat to come back and have any success i mean i could go make laps and you know maybe run mid-pack if on a good night but uh i just don't feel like uh i would be competitive enough uh, and it wouldn't yeah. be fun if i'm not competitive yeah i hear you i hear you but don't cut yourself short uh you're definitely a hell of a wheel man you know we talk about uh car counts you know that seems like to be a mainstream topic nowadays because Car count, you know, we've been talking about car counts, for, let's face it, for the last 20 years, you know. It goes along with how expensive the sport is and blah, blah, blah. What do you think maybe we need to do or the tracks need to do to try to gain momentum back and put these car counts back up uh, to where they used to be back in the day? Well, I think that the, the motors have gotten way out of hand, uh, you know, as far as price. And, you know, that's not any fault of the engine builders, just the uh, – the price of parts have just quadrupled in the last 10 years. And, uh, you know, I think that's the reason why. And they also need to be rebuilt more often than they used to because they're more on kill now. Um, but, you know, as far as the car count, I think it's just, yeah, it's just the, the sign of the times. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, you know, it used to be a bunch of car owners. And now most of the cars that are at the track are family owned or, you know, such but uh it's just getting i'm not sure why the car counts so bad i don't know i don't know what the answer is i think i think all the promoters if they knew the answer they would have a better car count no doubt about it now what about the quality of racing yep. you touched on that earlier as you said that lincoln has been having some great racing but what about the quality of racing around the area here oh i mean i think the quality of racing is good you know we always we've always had good good uh cars and drivers here um you know, the quality of racing, well, I mean, it just goes to show when the outlaws come into town, um, you know, they have a tough time with our guys. So I'd say the quality of racing is good. Um, I don't know. It seems like uh, clean air makes a big difference in these cars nowadays. And I've been to the Grove a couple of times uh, in the last couple of years and wasn't a whole lot of passing. But and I think it's just because on account of, you know, the cars are getting so – uh, aerodynamics, depending on aerodynamics, and, uh, you know, he, a guy gets out front, and he's hard to beat, you know, unless caution comes out and, and uh, you know, somebody pulls a slider or something, you know, in the first couple corners. But once they're up to speed, 
they're just kind of in a freight train. Yeah, and, and you know what? Let's talk a bit a, a, about aerodynamics. Who would thought we would be talking about aerodynamics with a sprint car? I mean, back in the day, would you guys really talk about how good and how bad the air is when you're behind somebody, you're trying to pass somebody? Would you really talk about that back in the day, or was it, it a really an issue? Uh, it wasn't nearly as much of an issue uh, as the cars today. They're so, you know, aero-dependent. Um, you know, back in the day, we didn't, uh, you know, Stewart came along and Casey Kane, and they got some wind tunnel testing, and, uh, you know, the bodies have changed. Um, everything is just to get the car to cut through the air really good, but which makes it, you know, makes a big difference when you're not out in clean air. So I would say the difference probably is the wings. You know, we ran dish wings, and now they run flat wings. And the bodies are just getting more aerodynamic. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, um, Chris, uh, we talked about this too earlier. Who do you think is the next big up-and-comer here? You know, you go to Lincoln week in and week out, and there's a couple names in mind that comes or that comes up to us. But wh- who comes to your mind as the next big up-and-comer? Well, there's two there's two names that come to mind to me. Uh, you know, first little Freddie. You know, he's he's uh, grew up in, in the sport, and you know he took to it really quickly. And the other one who I feel is a major standout right now is Anthony Macri. You know, that kid's still in high school. Yeah, no doubt and, about uh, it. It's it's funny how these kids are getting younger and younger. Uh, you know, I attribute it to the video games. You know, they're playing these video games, and they go out there, and they kind of know what to do. Wow. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. iRacing has definitely turned the sport in a good way. You know, we got a lot of – you know, back in the day uh, – you don't take offense to this, Chris, but you were the young guy back in the day, and, and you were racing <laughs> a, 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 with a lot of the older people. Now – we're racing with uh, the older guys are becoming grandparents while their kids yeah. or or kids that are still in high school that barely have their driver's license are driving 410 sprint cars, which leads into this. Do you think we still need to have an age limit here, a cutoff to where guys can start to run 410s here in Central PA? Well, I mean, I, I, I think there should be some type of age limit. Um, you know, if you can't drive a car, you know, you shouldn't be able to drive a, you know, a 410. Right. Uh, but, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, it's it's the sign of the times. I mean, the kid, the young the young guys are are just coming in and, and getting success, like, so quickly. You know, when I started, heck, I, I think I raced a couple of years before I won a race. Yeah. You know, some of these kids went on in their first season. <laughs> no doubt about that. Uh, you started off at a very young age, and, and – you pretty much went out on the road uh, at an early age, earlier in your career before you came back here to run locally. What made you guys decide, hey, why not we just go with the World of Outlaws? Was it the money back in the day, or was it just so you could go out and see the country? Well, it really wasn't the money. Um, you know, I, we wanted to go out and, and race with the best, and, you know, they, they were the best. Um, I learned a whole lot in those, like, three years that I ran with them. You know, you come back and and we're we're just fast every race, you know, because you're you're racing to the level of the competition you're racing against, you know. And it was pretty high back then. There was a, you know, Wolfgang, Kinder, Swindell, you know, the big three, and there was just so many good guys out there. And and I learned a lot from them, you know, watching them race, and and uh, it was a really good experience. We just, uh, you know, it just got to be too much. It got to be too expensive. Uh, you know, to feel a car out on the road, it's just everything has just gotten so expensive. So we came back and, uh, you know, just started racing locally. And I got tired of being away from home all the time. We, you know, we were gone all but like two months out of the year racing. And uh, so, you know, we come back and we had, we had a good – we had a lot of success. I got, you know, I got hooked up with Davey Brown, and we won a lot of races, Davey and I, together. And uh, – it was just a good time, you know, back in the day. No doubt about it, you know, and and that's going to – two questions now that you went, since you brought up Davey. But real quick, when you were on the World of Outlaw Tour, besides Central PA racetracks, what were some of your other racetracks that you liked across the country when you were on the tour? Oh, I always – there's a couple out in California 
track uh, called Santa Maria was a really good, like, mm-hmm. real high banked uh, track and, you know, like a real, like a little small bull ring. And, uh, of course, I always like Eldora and Knoxville. Most of the bigger tracks, I was, I just seemed to do better on, on, on the bigger tracks. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I've got, got so much stuff going on here. Uh, yeah, let's talk about Davy Brown here, Chris. You know, that man is a god when it comes to working on a sprint car. I, you can contest to that when you won. Uh, you guys were winning left and right. What do you think about him at right now, man? He's still on top of his game. Oh, I love that whole team, you know. I uh, Just, you know, older guys, you know, my age. Not Davey, but you know, <laughs> Donnie and Lance. Um, I just – I can remember three or four years ago, you know, just sitting in the stands. I could hear people saying, you know, he's, Lance is washed up and this and that. But, uh, you know, he got in Donnie's car. Donnie's car has always been really good. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you know, with Davey. Uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a great combination, and I, I just love seeing them guys win. Yeah, no doubt about it. For sure. Now, you touched on this uh, back when you were talking about the World of Outlaws here, is that you race against Kenzer, Swindell, Wolfgang. Right now, Donnie Schatz has been absolutely dominating the World of Outlaw Tour. Do you think we'll ever see a kind of a three-headed monster we saw back then with um, our, uh, with Wolf, or Wolfgang, uh, Swindell, and Kenzer in the future here, or do you think that's kind of, those days are kind of gone? Well, I, I I'd like to see it, but I think those days are kind of gone. I mean, uh, he's just he's been dominant, the, you know, in the last I don't know ten years at least. Um, you know, there are guys here and there that'll pop up, but nobody's winning consistently like Donnie Schatz is winning. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. I mean, this man Donnie Schatz is just on his game each and every night. That car hits. The- racetrack it's quite phenomenal you know we got some fans chiming in here in the fully injected motorsports fan zone uh, as you you know you're a past champion up at the Seals grove raceway i think in 1993 i think you got the track championship up there have you been up there in a while or you know if you haven't have you been keeping track on social media and then seeing the new improvements they've been doing up at the Seals grove uh i haven't been i probably haven't been there in Probably 15 years. Um, I did see Steve over the winter, and he, he's been bugging me to come up and check it out. So I'm definitely going to make a trip up there this year. Uh, looks like they've done a whole lot there and you know, moved the pits on the outside, and they've just done a lot of renovations. And You know, it, 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 it's kind of funny. The, the, all these tracks are doing improvements, but their car count's not getting any better. I'm not sure why that is. Yeah. Uh, you know, at one time, Seals Grove used to be the fastest half mile on the East Coast, and it's still the it's still very fast. W- did you ever get scared going in there? Because a couple times, you know, it would rain all day there, and that track would get heavy and it get rough, and you still have to mat it around there. Would it be kind of a, intimidating some nights when you were run up at Seals Grove on a full time basis? Oh uh, yeah, it's a it's a really fast track, and I don't know if they've changed it, but. It used to narrow up so much coming off a of two that you almost had to be in line coming off a of two. Uh, but you know, I, I can remember going there and just just flat footing it for the whole twenty five laps if the if the caution didn't come out. Yeah, Shoot, man, they, they are absolutely flying up there. Well, we just saw it a couple of years ago. Lucas Wolf just said thirty or was it twenty thirty five or thirty lap track record up there. Yep, and um, in a four ten. So the speeds really haven't come down all that much up there. So. Do you think that maybe some of these speeds might be keeping some of these car counts down, or could it be that some of these guys are just worried about maybe hurting their motors? You know, maybe this early in the season. Well, I think I think uh, you know, of course, on the smaller tracks, Lincoln, uh, Susquehanna, definitely not as hard on the motors. You know, they get a chance to breathe, you get out of them a little bit. Um, you know, when you when you're out there flat footing it, it's really hard on that motor. It's not getting any chance to breathe and. Uh, you know, it's just really hard on motors, the bigger tracks. So I would say probably the bigger tracks, that would be their excuse, but I don't know about the other ones. you have any good road stories from back in the day, Chris, or even any stories around here? you have any good stories that people – I mean, keep them G-rated, maybe PG-13, but do you have any good stories from back in the day that you like to share right now? I mean, I'm interested. I love stories. Uh, nothing really comes to mind. Um, I just – I know – like. When I was with Davey, usually on the nights he would say, oh, we don't 
we don't have a chance tonight. Mm. That would be the night that the car would be so fast, and we would almost always win when he would say, oh, we don't have a chance tonight. You know, it, that's always been Davies, you know. Not always the positive one, but, you know, his work is is definitely positive. No doubt about it. He's definitely a genius. Oh, my God. I mean, look what he's yep. doing right now. So, uh, so Chris, uh, what do you have planned now coming up here um, over the next couple weeks? Are we going to be seeing you around the track a little bit more often, or are you going to be kind of just uh, kicking it back at home uh, keep close to Lincoln? Well, honestly, this weekend I, uh, I'm i going to race a go-kart up in Hunterstown. Oh. Um, just, you know, it's the, the first uh, PA Maxis race, and, I bought a go-kart over the winter, and I've been helping a buddy of mine, so we're going to go up there and play on Saturday. We've been been working a couple of weeks here trying to get ready for this race, but uh, that's about it. I, my daughter is graduating from Penn State next week, so Ooh. we'll be uh, we'll be up there for the week, and then I'll probably get back to watching some racing around here. I like it, Chris. Hey, man, thank you very, very much for coming on our show. Made our night, and uh, hey, we'll catch up with you here at the racetrack soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, yep. Chris. Race fans, right, a Hall, of, Hall of Famer, Chris Ace, just getting off the Moose's LZ hotline. And, you know, those pictures uh, really bring back some great memories. I tell you what, this is so cool. That, you know, as being the young one here, it's kind of cool to hear some of these stories and kind of get more involved and learn more about the sport. You know, you always learn something new every day. And, you know, hearing these stories about what it was like on the road, like I never even knew Davey helped Chris out. And, I mean, it just goes to show the level of drivers that Davey has helped out over the last, what, 50-some years. Yeah, no doubt about it. Davey is just a, uh, a musician when it comes to having oh wrenches God, out. Yeah. And, and he still can do it at 84. I mean, my God, the guy's timeless. No, no doubt about it. Well, fans, we're going to take one more commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have the Orange Crate Weekend Preview. Stay tuned. Good evening, race fans. Derek Snyder here from Pace Performance. Pace Performance is your complete source for all of your automotive needs. The nation's leading retailer of Chevy Performance Parts is also home to thousands of aftermarket performance parts, regardless of your vehicle's manufacturer. Visit PacePerformance.com to shop 24-7 and see the largest selection at one convenient location. And thank you for tuning in to Beer Hill Gang TV. Thank you, Derek Snyder, and welcome back to the folks. I'm sure you hear some noise in the background. Uh, that's the new puppy. Don't I, call animal control. Uh, yeah, don't call animal control. I, I, uh, we just got a new puppy, part of the family here, and he wants to be back down here. Uh, he wants to be like the old man and get on the microphone and start talking. But that brings us to the Orange Crate Weekend Preview as we will go down to Williams Grove tomorrow night. Yes, sir, we will. I think, you know what, looking at the weather, this should be the last cold night we have so far it's for a while. It's not going to be cold. It's going to be mid-50s tomorrow. Mid-50s. All right, but so I'm just and saying sunny. last chilly and night. Sunny. Last chilly night. Can a chilly. I'll take chilly. There we go. Last chilly night. Of course, tomorrow night, the Lawrence Chevrolet 410 sprint cars along with the HJ Towing 358 sprint cars as well. Here's my question for you. Can Greg Honnett pick up his first win tomorrow night at the Grove and hold on to that points lead he has? Absolutely. You think so? Absolutely. I mean, it's going to be uh, uh, the handicap format. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited for the format. It's going to be put on great racing because, you know, the way the format is, the fast guy's starting the back of a heat race, and if for some reason they can't pass, then they're going to start mid to the back of the pack for the feature, and they got to work up their uh, work up the way of the front, like last we did last week. So yeah, don't sleep on. It. I, I can see Greg Hotnight getting the win this Friday night. I could too, but I could also see uh, a guy. I, we said his name on the show. I've been saying it all night. Anthony Macri. Yeah, I think he could pick up a win tomorrow night at the Grove. No doubt about it. Then everybody, Saturday, Lincoln Speedway is having a great show. There, it's Auto Racing Club of Hagerstown night, and also the McSherry's. Uh, town Moose Lodge, 720 night with the Lawrence Chevrolet 410 sprint cars with the Kaiser Aluminum Wheels 358 sprint cars with the 358 late miles. Make sure you get down to Lincoln Speedway because that's going to be a hell of a show. Always was a great show. Oh, for sure, without a doubt. So, uh, I don't know, we might have to go check that out Saturday night because there's going to be a lot of closed wheel action coming around here this weekend. Of course, we uh, some of us will head up 
to the Speed Pal Sport Rule Speedway for Open Wheel Madness number one of this season with the Weikert Livestock 410 Sprint Cars, the opener for the Capital Renegade URC 360 Sprint Cars, and the Creasy Sign 305 Sprint Cars. i got to give a shout-out to a, a friend of mine, Justin Whittle. He'll be pulling double duty this weekend in a 410 and in a URC 360 Sprint Car this weekend. A lot of drivers are going to be doing double duty, actually. Uh, Lucas Wolf. Uh, we're going to see, see the debut oh. of the Paps Blue Ribbon number 5W in the 360s. And also he'll be in the McGambi car uh, for the four tens. Uh, I think Greg Hodnett indicated that he will be driving. Also, Mark Smith. Yep. He's going to be doing double duty this Saturday up at the Speed Palace. So it's going to be Sucks. a maybe. great feel. I'm hoping. Hey, That'd be nice. hey, maybe Blaine Heinbach, Phil. You never know. Blaine hey, Heinbach. Yeah, talk to him. So, so get, yeah. some, get a bug in his ear. Yeah, Blaine Heinbach, he could be doing do double duty. Hopefully he does. But it's going to be another great Saturday night up at uh, the Port Royal Speedway. And we're going to stay right there with Port Royal. Uh, Actually, we're gonna, what? Uh, uh, Actually, we're going to stick with the 410 Sprint Car. All right. We got another show coming up here on uh, – Sunday afternoon for the Ray Tilly Classic at the Seals Grove Speedway. Their first time for the 410s up there this year. 30 last, $4,088 to win with 400 Sarge Plus Pro Sox and the Roadrunners. I'm really excited to see what the uh, what the race is going to be like up there. The track has always been great. This race, the past couple of years, has really grown in stature with Lucas Wolf being the defending winner of that race. No doubt about it. It's going to be a great show. Uh, make sure you get up to uh, Seals Grove Raceway. Check out some fast action up there, and also check out the great improvements uh, with the pit area being outside of Turn 4. You can see the whole racetrack. And then... Can we piss off some people now? Sure. Sunday. Uh, I cannot wait for this. Uh, I love when the big late model guys come into town. Uh, the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Racing Series are going to make their first appearance here in Central PA, and their only appearance up at the Port Royal Speedway. They're going to bring a heavy contender of cars don't sleep on it i think we have a minimum of 40 late models uh, 40 super late models so, go uh, higher than that oh, I, I hope I, so i'm thinking 55 and the way the weather looks it gets better and better every day so i'm hoping for 55 plus uh, late models but and ten thousand to win too earl no doubt about it and that's just a great payday that's what's going to bring in the guys ten thousand dollars is on the line for the super late models you know there's been a big debate you know over the last year or so or where do guys run do they run with the lucas oil series or they run with the world of outlaw series I think right here is why they do because it pays more throughout the field. As it is ten thousand win, I believe a thousand for tenth or fifteen hundred and eight hundred to start, Earl. That's a huge payday for some of these guys. That is great money mm -hmm. for a lot of the local competitors, and I'm hoping a lot of the local competitors are going to come out oh. and support the show. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, the rules package, make sure you contact Lucas Oil or look at the Port Rolls uh, Port Royal Speedway's social media outlets. They have all the rules scheduled. Uh, for you guys if you have any questions for that. But, man, another great Boom. show. Another great show, Earl. That was a lot of fun. Hey, good job your, uh, to yourself this past weekend up at the uh, Port Royal Speedway. Back on the mic there. Uh, I love love the burn with Tyler Altmaier this week. My God, that had us rolling. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm still learning some stuff up there, but I'd like to thank everybody for letting me do some uh, fun stuff up there. But, folks, that is going to wrap up another great episode of PA Sprint Car Live right here on Bear Hill Gang TV. Uh, I'd like to thank all you fans for tuning in and Beer boy. Uh, letting us kick off your uh, racing weekend. So uh, thank you once again. I'm going to wait for Phil because we normally have a tradition right here at this the end of the show. We started, yeah, it's a great tradition. Oh, my. Great. I, I, need th I need this out there, especially working during the day. My God. Yeah, you need this out there. This. Uh, but, folks, as thank tradition, you, it is the end of the show. I found new copyrighted music. Uncopyrighted. Uncopyrighted. Yeah, uncopyrighted. Get it right so we don't get in trouble. Good Lord. Which is virtually impossible. No doubt about it. <laughs> Let but, me know what you think. But, Phil, you do a great job. But, folks, this beer is for you. Once again, thank you for tuning in and letting us kick off your racing weekend. We pop this top to you. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs>